Okay, so this video is about ideal gases versus real gases, but also trying to explain a bit about what gas pressure is. So first off, ideal gases. When we are gonna talk about gases in this course, we're going to simplify them a bit. Um, we're gonna treat them as though they are ideal gases, so they behave perfectly. They don't do anything wrong, and they don't ever break the rules. Now, obviously, real gases don't always do that, and we're going to point out some of our assumptions and how some of our assumptions are inaccurate, and especially when they are most inaccurate. But for now, this will work for most of our thinking about gases. <clears throat> so, number one, gas particles move in straight line motion. So we think of gas particles as traveling only in straight lines as they move through a container. Gas particles experience no attractions for other gas particles. So as this uh, gas particle moves past this one, it doesn't feel an attraction over towards it at all. It just moves on straight past it. So there's no attraction between particles. They just travel around in straight line motion. And this also means that when they collide with one another, as they are going to do if they're in a container together, we are going to assume that when they collide, they're not really losing any energy. There's no energy loss. The collisions are elastic. So the total energy is conserved. The kinetic energy is conserved. They're not like losing energy to each other. We are then going to assume that gas particles average kinetic energy is proportional to their temperature in kelvins, their absolute temperature. And we already know that. We know that uh, temperature is average, a measure of average kinetic energy and especially when we have it in kelvins, because then when we have a zero Kelvin temperature, we have zero kinetic energy. So every now and then I've seen this graph presented on the IB exam, and it's basically just showing you that average kinetic energy is the same thing as temperature in Kelvin. It's just a Y equals X graph. So it's just a straight line, looks like Y equals X. So if we know about a gas's temperature, then we know something about the average kinetic energy of its particles. And if we increase the temperature of a gas, then we increase the average kinetic energy of its particles. And lastly, we assume that gas particles themselves take up negligible volume when compared to the overall volume of the gas. So that means that gases are mostly empty space as opposed to liquids or solids which have basically no empty space in between their particles. And so since the particles are so far apart from one another, um, they base, their volume in and of itself is basically so small we can ignore it so it's negligible we can ignore their volume so even though we see the gas particles in these cartoon images the gas particles would actually be much farther apart in uh, an actual gas and so they would seem much smaller relative to the overall volume of the gas so that's how we need to sort of imagine gases these little tiny particles they're super tiny but there's lots of them they're moving around quickly and they're colliding with each other and the walls of the container. And that's where we get gas pressure. So pressure is force divided by area. Now the unit of force uh, in physics is the Newton and uh, the unit of area is the meter squared. So if we take a Newton and we divide it by a meter squared, then we get a unit of pressure called the Pascal, symbol is PA. Now it's a pretty small unit of pressure, and so actually we're mostly gonna use the unit of the kilopascal, which is equal to a thousand pascals. So gas pressure, where does the force come from? Well, the force of a gas comes from all of its collisions, all the gas particles colliding with the container walls, with the surface of the containers. So that's where the force comes from. And then the area is, well, how much area is there? Uh, on this container, on its walls. So that's where pressure is coming from, the force of the collisions on the area of the surface of its container. And so any change that we make to a gas that makes them collide more often with the walls of the container will also cause an, in will cause an increase in the gas pressure. And if we do something that makes fewer collisions, then uh, we will get less gas pressure. It's also important to remember that there is uh, atmospheric pressure. So we might be talking about a particular sample of gas, and maybe our gas is inside this balloon, but there's also lots and lots of gas particles outside of it. So very rarely are we talking about being in a vacuum, like being in outer space where there's really no particles. So this is the air around it or the atmosphere, and that has a pressure, and then you've got then we've got the 
gas on the inside, which also has a pressure. Now those two pressures find a way of uh, equalizing. So the air on the outside pushes in, the gas particles collide with the surface of the balloon, and the gas particles on the inside of the balloon collide with the inside of the balloon, and they push back out. And so what we find is that pressures tend to equalize when you have two containers. Pressure on the inside, pressure on the outside, tend to find a way to equalize unless the container is of a fixed volume, a fixed size, and so then it can't equalize. Now, atmospheric pressure, the standard, what's called standard pressure, is 100,000 pascals, 1 times 10 to the 5th pascals. Um, however, that's kind of a big number for our standard value, so we tend to use kilopascals, like I said, and so 100 kilopascals uh, is standard pressure. Normal atmospheric pressure is more or less 100 kilopascals. And it's important to know this term standard pressure. It gets used a lot, especially when talking about gases, to make sure that we're talking about gases under similar conditions. Okay, so thinking through a couple of examples here, uh, what would happen to this balloon as it rises up to higher altitudes where there are fewer gas particles and therefore lower pressure? So if there's less uh, particles around it, so I'll just draw fewer than are in that picture, then the combined pressure on the outside of the balloon will be lower. So if the pressure here can be represented by these arrows of this size pushing in on the balloon, when the balloon rises up to smaller uh, pressures, so higher altitudes, fewer gas particles, less collisions, less pressure, the arrows shrink. Well, what's the balloon going to do in response to that? Well, the gas particles on the inside are still pushing out with the same amount of pressure. So the balloon will actually get bigger. And so the balloon gets bigger until the gas particles on the inside and the outside are pushing out and in with the same amount of pressure. And so we have smaller pressure outside, which will allow the balloon to expand. And now we'll also have smaller pressure inside. So here's the pressure of our gas and here's the pressure outside. They will tend to equalize if we have a flexible container.